what if I didn't like what I made? What if it's too skinny or too fat? Well, I'll just adjust the curve. So let me adjust the curve. Nothing happened. Why didn't anything happen? Well, nothing happened because I revolved this with history not enabled. So let's delete this and do it again. Let's do it with history. So I'm going to click history. Now I'm going to revolve because it's still in here, right? Isn't it? Do, 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 do. Nope, got to go get it again. That's okay. So I'm going to click here, go down to revolve. I'm going to pick this as my curve to revolve, right click to accept. I know I'm at the origin, so I'm just going to hit zero enter, shift click, full circle. Did the same thing. Well, the cool thing about this is watch this. I can turn the points on for the curve and I can edit this. Let's make this part fatter. I can pick those curves and look what happens. My bottle updates. So I can iterate my shape just based on what happens with the original curve. So this thing feels a little skinny, so maybe I'm just going to bump this out. Well, this now starts to feel a little pinheaded, so maybe I'll grab this and I'll move these out. See, as I move these points, everything starts to adjust. So I can make my decisions in 3D where they really matter, right? Sketches, sketches are great. Sketches are a great place to start, but really at the end of the day, they don't mean much because really what matters is what you get in 3D. Now, I'm not really happy with this part here, so let's adjust that. Let me show you a cool trick. I'm going to pick each one of these points, and I'm going to use this gumball indicator in a cool way. So let's talk about gumball for a second. All right, I've got transformation handles, which are basically move, right? Left, right, up, down. Okay, these are constrained in the direction of the arrow. I've got a, a seaplane transformation here where if I click on it, I can translate in two dimensions but not three. I can't come in or out of the screen. I can only go left, right, up, down. Okay? And I've also got a rotate icon, which if I click on this, I can rotate it. And that's all well and good, but none of that does what I really want. What I really want to do is I want to flatten this line out. Well, I could come in here and I could snap these, or I could make a line and do all that kind of stuff. Or I could double click on the scale icon, hit zero, enter, and look what happens. It scales everything to the center of that bounding box and snaps that line straight. Cool, right? So let's mess with this just a little bit. Maybe we want to add a little crown here. Maybe we want to add a little crown here. Let's take a look at perspective and see what we got. So that's starting to feel better, right? So we've iterated the shape using history in a way that allows us to make decisions that are constantly moving forward. We're not trying something going back, trying something going back, trying something going back. We're trying something moving forward, trying something moving forward, trying something moving forward. That's what history allows you to do. Okay? There's a, the, a joke I tell in my class that those who, those who don't understand how to use history are doomed to repeat their commands. It's a bad joke. Nobody ever laughs at it but me. So what are we doing next? Well, we've got a water bottle, <clears throat> but it's a solid object, right? It doesn't do us much good to have a water bottle that we can't do anything with. So in this case, I'm going to shut my points off because I'm done iterating at this point. So I'm going to just hit the escape key, and you'll notice my points disappear. Then I'm going to pick my curve, and I'm going to just hide it for now. In fact, you know what? I'm going to even do something better than that. I'm going to make a curves layer and I'm going to pick my curve, curve, and I'm going to right click, move object to this layer, and then I'm going to hide it using this icon. Okay, so now my curve is no longer in my scene, but I can get it back anytime I want just by 
clicking the hide show icon. Okay, so I'm going to just hide it for now. So my curve is still there, but it's just not part of the scene. So if I ever needed to go back to it, I could. And I, I highly recommend keeping curves. It's just good model practice. So let's open this thing up. And 